In this video, we're going to quickly take a look at all of the different light fixtures and their features. So the best place to start is I'm just in my sample project file that comes with the download. And it's nice to be able to see the lights in 3D so that you can see what's going on and see the different types. So generally speaking, what you will find is you'll find a round surface mount, a square surface mount, then just your typical socket fixture. It's just a bulb in a socket, and that comes with a pull chain or a non-pull chain variety. Then um, you'll have your exhaust fans, your recessed exhaust fans for like your bathrooms uh, in both a version that's a light and a fan combination or just a fan. You'll find your surface mounted linear lights here, and then your ceiling fans, your pendants, chandelier, and kind of a linear chandelier. Then you'll see all your can varieties, both square and round, and then your recessed linear lights here. Then there's even track lights included. Then here comes your sconces, so the wall wall mounted. So you've got your vanity sconce, um, your flush mounted sconce, an offset sconce, and then floodlights, and then we even include like a, an integrated night light that is just mounted in the wall. Here is your strip light for underneath cabinets is mostly what I use that light for. And then here's a strip light that's kind of face-based. That is what I use for like uh, every once in a while I'll do accents on the front, the nosing of a staircase on on some of my jobs. So I'll use this for the, the front of my stairs. Um, I also use this one to, um, to do my tray lighting. So if I have like a tray in the ceiling, I'll also use this fixture for that. Then you have a couple options for outdoor lighting, kind of your typical pathway lighting, a spotlight, and then a well light that's shining straight up. So right out of the box, you, you get a bunch of different light fixtures. Again, um, I'm looking at the base package, so the starter pack, and it's just got kind of generic looking lights. Some of our, if you're using an expansion pack, you'll have these same light fixtures, but they'll look different depending on what style you picked. But generally, they'll function the same as what I'm about to describe. So that's what they look like in 3D. In 2D, they have pretty typical industry standard symbols for, these are again, geared towards residential lighting. So they're residential setting uh, symbols. So your flush mount lights just kind of look like your typical light symbol. The socket with the chain has this little tail on it. Then you've got your light and exhaust fan combo and then just your fan. A box light looks like this, your ceiling fan, then your pendant lights, then here's your recessed cans of different sizes. And then the S means that they're a spotlight, so they have that head that rotates. Here's your recessed linear lights, track lighting symbols, and then your vanity and other sconces all the way down to our landscape lighting. Again, um, if you'd like to see how I use these lights, you can look at the example up above. But generally, everything you will need for a residential project should be included here, light-wise. All right, let's talk about some of the features of the lights because this is what we've we worked most hard on the lights because they are the trickiest families because we wanted to do a couple things. We wanted to fix fix a couple problems. So traditionally, when I was doing electrical layouts, there were a couple problems that I was always running into. One is getting the lights to show up in a floor plan. Because in residential, we don't always do a reflected ceiling plan. We typically want our electrical stuff to be in a floor plan. So in order to get that to work with your standard out of the box light families or any stuff I was finding online, you had to first create a ceiling plan, you had to place everything in the ceiling plan, then you had to come back to a floor plan and try to figure out the graphical settings so that it was showing the ceiling and it was showing the lights on the ceiling. And most of the time when I did that, the lights were grayed out because the, the lights were an underlay. 
And so I'd have these, the, the outlets would be black and the switches would be black, but then the lights would all be half toned because the underlay was half toned. And so graphically it was always a fight to get it to look right. Then in addition to that, um, I couldn't edit my lights. Like I couldn't grab a light and move it to a new location from the floor plan because it was an underlay unless you knew, and most people don't know this, that you can come down here and you can click this button to allow you to edit what's being shown in an underlay. So unless you knew that trick, which most people didn't know, and it was causing me problems when I was trying to instruct new people on how to do electrical plans, they had to keep, keep flipping to their ceiling plan to move their lights. And then when you move to your ceiling plan, you don't see maybe your countertops and you're trying to center your pendants on your countertop. So it was causing all sorts of problems. So in summary, what I was trying to fix is some graphical problems, placement problems. I didn't want people to have to go to a ceiling plan in order to place their lights and to adjust their lights and to wire the lights and to edit the lights. So I was trying to fix all that. Additionally, um, in residential, we like to have these symbols and they worked great when we used flat ceilings, but anytime you had a vaulted ceiling where the light would be angled, then the symbol disappears because the, the light is then put on an angle and Revit won't display the symbol of the light if the light isn't exactly um, parallel with the view plane that we're looking at. So I was also finding that sloped ceilings were causing all sorts of problems. So what we've tried to do is we have fixed most of those problems. In With these families, you can place them in a floor plan view as long as you have a ceiling. You do have to make sure you put your ceilings in first. Because all of these families are ceiling hosted, ceilings need to exist. But once you place your ceiling and you adjust your view, your electrical floor plan view, so that you can see an underlay of the ceiling, you're good to go. You can place stuff in floor plan view without ever going to a ceiling plan. You don't even need to create a ceiling plan if you don't want to. Um, you can edit them from the floor plan, you can move them, you can place them, everything. And you can know that they're going to look good in 3D because they're ceiling place or ceiling hosted. So they're automatically hosting to your ceiling. And so you don't really have to think too much about the 3D view. And that includes when they're angled. So even on an angled ceiling, so you can see this, the ceiling is vaulted. You can see everything hosts correctly to the ceiling. So surface mounted lights, they get oriented to the angle of the ceiling and the lights like pendant lights where the plate needs to be angled, but the light hangs directly down. That's also fixed. And even with linear lights, so you can see the light is tilted uh, across the short axis, but what if you need a linear light the other direction? So if you just rotate this in floor plan, let me show you what would happen. So if I rotate this 90 degrees and then I look at it, oh, sorry, let's redo that. You can see this is the one that I rotated. It's no longer the correct orientation. So I'm gonna undo that. And what you can do is you can click on the linear lights and there's an option that says rotate 90 degrees. And if you click that, it will rotate at 90 degrees and it will correct the angle problem. So let's put that back the way it was. Same with this one. So we've got this linear chandelier and maybe we want it rotated 90 degrees. We can do that and you can see now the plate, instead of being angled along its long axis is rotated, it's angled along its short axis so that it matches the ceiling still no matter which orientation the light fixture's in. All right, so one more thing about placing these. Let's just place one of these families. Out of the box, um, so we tried to make it as smart as possible, but there are limits. So let me just show you. Let's look at our main level. 
and I'm going to place, uh, let's just do a surface. Oh, sorry, a flush, I think is what I call it, a flush. Let's just do a simple flush light fixture. And you can see it allows me, I'm in floor plan view, and it's allowing me to place it anywhere on my ceiling. So I'm just gonna click there. And now if I look in 3D, where I placed that light fixture, Whoops, I'm not seeing it, sorry. I uh, accidentally selected the 2D version of the family. So we want to go back to our floor plan and let's place a flush mount light that is not 2D. In fact, let's just do a recessed. Do uh, let's do a two by twenty four inch by two inch. All right, so I'm going to place this here, and you'll notice it disappeared. So there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. You can see that it placed the family, and you can also see that it's not angled. So this is the caveat. In order to do everything we wanted them to do, the only thing we couldn't get them to do is automatically detect the angle of the ceiling. That's not something, that's not a parameter that Revit will allow us to automatically read from the ceiling. So you have to, you'll have to slope the families. So it does host it to the ceiling. So wherever you move it on the ceiling, it will, it will follow the slope of the ceiling as far as placement, but it won't automatically tilt the fixture to the ceiling. Okay, so that's the first item. The second item is you'll notice when we were looking in floor plan, if I drag this higher up the ceiling, it disappears. And when I drag it lower down the ceiling, it, automa it automatically comes in to, a it automatically appears. That's because the light also has something called the ceiling height parameter. And this, it's automatically set to eight because that will that, it, that setting is good enough for both eight foot ceilings and nine foot ceilings. But if your ceilings get much higher than that, like this vaulted ceiling probably goes up to like 14 feet, then you can just go into the light and select, just make this high, the ceiling height higher. It doesn't actually change the height of the ceiling, but what it does do is, I don't know if you can see it, but when I click on this family, there's this long line that goes down to the floor. And in Revit, if, if the cut plane of your view isn't cutting through this line, it doesn't show the symbol of the light. So you just always have to remember that if you're gonna put a light really high on a really high ceiling, you do just need to extend the ceiling height line. So you can see if I put this back to eight, do you see where the line ends? It's well above the cut plane. So in order to get it to show, I need to set it to something longer even probably 12 inches is enough to make it show. Okay, so that's caveat one that you just need to remember to do. So if your symbol disappears while you're placing it, it's most likely because the ceiling is higher than the um, ceiling height setting in the family. And to correct that, all you need to do is make it higher. All right, the next setting you'll want to know about is then this angled setting. So if you come over here, there's a sloped ceiling button that you need to turn on if it's on a sloped ceiling, and then you can give it the rise and the run of the ceiling. So if I click on my ceiling, I can easily see what the slope is. It's a 12, it's a 12, 12 slope. So all I need to do is click on my light, hit the, hit the button that says it's sloped, and then here's the rise and the run. The run is already set for you at one because typically that's how we do rise and run, but the rise is the variable portion. So we did a 12, 12, rise to run, so we're just gonna do one foot there, and you can see it changes the angle of my light for me. And now, from then on, I don't really have to think about anything. I can move this around on my ceiling, and it automatically hosts it correctly against the ceiling, 
and keeps the angle that I input. And again, because it's a linear fixture, you have the option to rotate it 90 degrees and it'll flip the light and which, to, which axis the angle, the ceiling angle is being applied to. All right, other than that, there's the traditional um, parameters that you're used to seeing. You can change the materials and you can also flip the angle of the ceiling in case, um, so say you vaulted the ceiling this way, but then you decided, oh, I actually wanna vault it going the other direction. There is the option, if you click on the light, you can flip the slope angle to go the other direction. So that's a 1-12 a a slope, but in the other direction. So there might be a time where you use that. Most of the time, it, if you don't change the slope of your ceiling, it, it will adjust. It will be fine. All right, that said, there are individual, some lights have individual things that you can change about them. So for example, let's just go through these. The round lights, if you edit their type parameters, you can change the length, width, and height of those lights. Same with the square. Pull chain, there's not a whole lot of other options. Same with the exhaust vent, other than having a light or not having a light. The box lights, you can change the width, height, and dement, uh, and length. Width, height, width, height, and depth. Um, all the pendant lights, you can change their suspended length. So if you want them suspended closer to the ceiling, you can move those up or down. That applies to all of the pendant lights. The can lights can also, you can change their size if you'd like. It comes standard in four inch, six inch, and eight inches. But if you want bigger or smaller, you can do those. You can make new types. Same with the recess lights. You can change their width, height, and depth. Then the track lights, they come with even more interesting settings. Um, so there's all of the settings we've been talking about. But then depending on how you want to chain them together, you can change the different ends. So you can see because this one was connected to that one, the end on here is, it has no end. And then the other end has a cap on it. So you can click on the light and there's connection, there's connection side A and B, and you have a drop down list of whether you want it to be a no cap, end cap, or if you want it to have a 90 degree connection point. And then in floor plan, you can easily align these with each other using the symbols here. And then when you go in 3D, you can see they're all aligned. You can change the length of these lights. So if we wanted a six foot track right here instead, we could adjust it to be six feet. You can adjust the number of lights on it. If we'd like eight lights on there, we can change change it to have eight lights. Um, if you need it to rotate 90 degrees, you can do that. If you wanted them to be facing the other way, you can change the angle of the spotlights. So if we wanted them to be, right now they're set to 30 degrees. If we wanted them to be 45 degrees, we can do that and it, and it will change those. And again, you then then you have your other settings that we've already talked about. So that is track lighting. And the sconces uh, are roughly the same. So that's generally how you would use all of these lights. You can explore them more as you use them, but they should save you a ton of time, headache, and frustration once you learn how to use them. So uh, thanks for using our families and I'll see you in the next video.